Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you the average energy of a quantum system with quantized energy levels. This is video number 36, and just to point out that I now have a website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So why this is an important video is because we model lots of quantum systems as harmonic oscillators. In fact, we model both photons, light photons, and vibrational phonons as harmonic oscillators. So this video is going to show you a quick way of finding out the average energy of a photon and the average energy of a phonon, both of which we'll see in a moment obey Bose-Einstein statistics. So this is very important, and from this we'll, uh, we'll be able to get the heat capacity of the Einstein heat capacity, or the formula for the Einstein specific heat. So the previous videos to this are as follows. In video number 35, I showed that the infinite power series 1 plus x plus x squared up to infinity when converges when x is less than 1 and is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. In video number 34, I showed that if we use the partition function, we are able to very quickly calculate the average energy. And that's what we're going to use here. So you see the average energy is minus 1 over z delta beta of z, or the thermodynamic beta is 1 over kt. So this, it's this, it is actually this formula which makes using the partition function so easy in comparison with grinding out the multiplicities like I did in many of the previous videos in my quantum statistics tutorials. So this function, this formula will allow us to do the same thing in a fraction, a fraction of the time. So in order to understand that, I hope that you've watched my video on the partition function and you've also seen my video on Bose -Einstein, the Bose-Einstein occupancy function. So because we'll have the average energy after this of a, a, a quantum harmonic oscillator, we'll be able to get the Einstein formula for the specific heat. Why is that? Well, because we will have the uh, we, we we will have the formula for the average energy of a harmonic oscillator, which is exactly what Einstein did. Now, I do have another video on the Einstein um, formula for the specific heat. So, I suppose this has some additional information because it looks at it in a slightly different way. So, both don't have all the information. And I've done that specifically. So, let's go ahead. This is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to come up with the partition function. So what is the partition function? Z, we, say, we said, is the, is the partition function, and it's the sum of the Boltzmann factors, e to the minus e sub s over kt. Okay, another way of writing it is in terms of the, part or in terms of the, uh, the thermodynamic beta, and it's, we'll say it's, you can, you can write it like this. Okay, now all we need to work out here is what the energy levels are. So in it, we're going to assume that the energy levels are quantized, okay, and that they're quantized in units of what I'm going to call epsilon. Now, look, we'll find out later on, and it doesn't really matter, but epsilon is actually, it, the, the quantum is h nu, or h is Planck's constant, and nu is the, uh, is the frequency of vibration. So what Einstein assumed was that there was a single characteristic frequency, and that all the, we'll say, harmonic oscillators vibrated at that particular frequency. And that's why he only got an approximate answer. Later on, a man called Debye came along, and his theory of solids used a number of frequencies, and as a result, he had a better uh, model for the heat capacity of a solid. Anyway, so what we're looking at here is uh, quantized energy levels. So we're going to start off, we're going to say, assume that E0 is 0. It's going to be 0 plus epsilon plus 2 epsilon plus 3 epsilon and so on. Okay, and if you want to have them in terms of the... Uh, the quantum of energy is 0 h nu plus h nu plus 2 h nu and the whole way up. So they're quantized energy levels um, and the quantum of energy is h nu or epsilon. Alright, so what does the partition function become if we do that? That means z is going to become it's going to become e to the 0 plus e to the minus beta epsilon plus e to the minus 2 beta epsilon plus so, so on. Now the thing about this is e to the 2x is equal to e to the x to be squared. That's just a property of exponentials, a very handy property of exponentials. So as a result we're able to rewrite this if we like as z is equal to, I'm going to swap colors, z is equal to, uh, it's going to be 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon, say e to the minus beta epsilon like this, ok, 
Okay, and we've seen that this one before, we could rewrite this of course as 1 plus x plus x squared. So that's 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, so it's 1 over 1 minus e to the minus b to epsilon. So we're after finding out the partition function very, very quickly. So the partition function as a result is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus e to the minus b to epsilon. That is the partition function for vibrational phonons, and it can also, of course, be apply, applied to, to photons, okay, because they both obey Bose Einstein's uh, statistics. So that is the partition function. So that's, that's actually the hard part. So we next apply the partition function in order to calculate the average energy of our system, which is modeled as a linear quantum harmonic oscillator. So to remind us, Z was equal to 1 over 1 minus e to the minus b to epsilon. We know that the average energy of our system is equal to minus 1 over z del del beta of z. So it just it's just a case really here of doing it nice and slowly so we don't make a mistake. So the average energy of our system, e bar by the way, is going to be equal to um, minus 1 minus e to minus b to epsilon. That's 1 over z. That's minus 1 over z, excuse me. Then we're going to have del del beta and we're going to have 1 minus e to the minus b to epsilon to the minus 1. Alright, so we need to get, let's do the differentiation. So e bar is going to be equal to uh, minus, we'll say 1 minus e to the minus b to epsilon. Then we're going to have a minus 1 where this power is brought down. We're going to have 1 minus e to the minus b to epsilon again. And now we need to differentiate the argument itself, which is going to be epsilon times e to the minus b to epsilon. All right, like that. Very straightforward. And we can rearrange this if we like. That, um, let's take there now, put black, that e bar is equal to epsilon e to the minus beta epsilon over 1 minus e to the minus beta epsilon. Okay, or if we divide across by e to the minus beta epsilon, we get epsilon over e to the beta epsilon minus 1. Now, here is the interesting part. All right, that's the answer, okay? Here is the interesting part. Can we remember what the Bose-Einstein occupancy function was? The Bose-Einstein occupancy function was 1 over uh, e to the alpha plus beta epsilon minus 1. Okay? And this is exactly what we have here, but because there is no limit on the number of photons, or, or phonons actually in this case, that means alpha is equal to 0 and we get beta epsilon, which is exactly what we have here. So we can see that the harmonic oscillator obeys both Einstein statistics, and in fact, is a, the the, um, the vibrational phonons or the vibrational photons are in fact a bosons. Okay, so they obey both Einstein statistics. Okay, now where do we go from here? We have the, that's the average energy of a single oscillator. So how do we get the average energy of n identical oscillators? Well, then we're going to say that u bar is equal to n times e bar. Now this really is the average energy. The, sorry, the total average energy, but I'm going to say that because fluctuations are so small, we're going to say this is the total energy of our system. We're going to make that assumption. So it's going to be n times epsilon over e to the beta epsilon minus 1. Okay? And if you look at my video on the Einstein formula for the specific heat, this is actually, this is where we started. I started that whole video with this particular formula here. Okay, in the next video, I'm just going to differentiate with that with respect to T to get the, the heat capacity. So we can see how useful this partition function is and that formula one over, minus 1 over Z delta beta of Z. Because with those, they're very easy to calculate and we're able to, we're able to, um, we're able to use them so, so easily. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also have a look at universityphysicstutorials.com.